Hey folks, welcome to Black Gumbo Southern Gardening. It's cold. We gotta prepare. Well, the majority of the nation already knows that it's cold and it's gonna get colder. Right here on the subtropical Texas coast, I'm in zone 9A and we're about to have an event that doesn't happen very often. We're gonna have more than 24 hours, probably about 30 hours or 36 hours below freezing and not just a little bit below freezing, but it's going to be down into the teens. And um, I, we're going to hover around 20, 25, um, most of all day uh, tomorrow, Monday. Uh, that's what the weatherman's saying. We're going to get freezing rain. We're probably going to get some snow and it's going to stick on the ground because, well, it's not going to get above freezing. So. Here in the city of Houston area, it's going to be madness and mayhem as people who think they know how to drive on the ice get out there and try to drive on the ice. It's going to be madness. Well, I've tried to cover some of my plants now. That tree right there, that's uh, Lucy the lemon tree. My wife finally gave it a name and earned a name because she loves Lucy. And uh, well, I've tried to patch up a covering for it. It's the best I can do. We'll see if that tree makes it. I'm going to put a source of heat underneath that and try to keep that running for the duration of the freeze. I've covered my other two little trees as well. Let me show you what I did with those. If you remember, we put in a, plum, a peach tree and a plum tree. Now these can take a little bit of frost and they can take a freeze, but uh, yeah, I need to cover them. They're brand new, they're young, they're still dormant. What I did was I, you don't wanna have uh, what I've learned when you cover plants, you don't wanna have plastic touching the, the tissue of the plant because that'll just freeze and it will destroy your plant. But I have plastic on here. But in between the plant and the plastic, I've put some Agribond uh, uh, agricultural cloth on there. It's a very light fleece and I've wrapped about 20 feet of it around each of those plants all the way to the ground. And so that should give it at least some thermal insulation with the heat coming from the ground. And the plastic on top of that is to keep that insulation uh, fairly dry. Now, I have heard and read that if you wet this down, and it's going to rain and get sleety, that um, that that will form a hard shell, and it will it will insulate that ice will insulate what's inside of that. Uh, but that cloth is so porous, water passes through real easily, and I just don't want to get it. I just don't want to risk it. So I put the plastic on there. We'll see if it helps. We'll see if it doesn't. You folks up north who know about this stuff, let me know what you think. Um, is this going to work or is this going to backfire on me with that plastic covering? I could put a source of heat in there in the form of a light bulb or something. Um, I may do that. Lucy got trimmed. The lemon tree was heavily pruned and there's carnage all around. And it had to be pruned. But I'm glad I did prune it before today because now I was able to at least get some blankets around it. That ought to be enough to keep... Uh, at least a, a little bit of temperature differentiation inside and outside. And I'm going to put a light in there and run that light to provide heat. And hopefully that'll be just enough heat trapped inside that, that blanketed structure that'll keep that plant from freezing. Um, I've also wrapped a blanket around the, the main trunk down near the graft. Hard to see that graft these days. But if the tree dies back, I want that trunk to be, um, I want that trunk to be protected and hopefully the root system will survive. So here's what we have beneath this canopy of our lemon tree. I've got a heat lamp clamped here that ought to keep things pretty toasty under here. And I've got some water here to uh, hot water bottles. And I place them under here and they'll radiate off a little bit of heat. If it's not gonna be a deep freeze, this is really all you would need. But uh, I'm hoping that that heat lamp will keep that uh, collecting the the heat and helping to store this thermal mass, this thermal thermal energy in that mass. Uh, maybe I better just leave it on the soil, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this for now, and we should be good. All right, let me get this all closed up. One thing we had to do was cover our exposed water faucets. Uh, this is just a towel wrapped around there. A fella from Minnesota on the local home improvement radio show said that's all you need in something like this you don't need a hard shell over it in fact he said that if you if it rains and this gets wet 
it will freeze over and much like I said before that it will form a hard shell and help insulate even more. Uh, if it doesn't rain you can come out here and spray water on it and do the same thing. But we're going to get lots of rain starting, well it's starting right now so all my faucet are, uh, faucets are fixed up and ready to go. Yeah it's ugly back here isn't it? It is ugly. We got no spring so there's no no growth coming in over here where we took trees out. All my trimmings from my pruning of the tree are still lying around. Uh, the garden's kind of scraggly. I need to weed whack around the borders there and tidy things up. But uh, yeah, not yet. How cold is it right now? It's only freezing right now, isn't it? Just above freezing. But it's going to be way down. It's going to be way down, way down here in a little while. Everything else in the garden's on its own. That guy's died already. Brussels sprouts ought to make it through there, although I'm thinking if it doesn't start raining, and it, it is starting to rain, I might come out and harvest these tiny Brussels sprouts. Um, all these are going to die back. Carrots ought to do fine. Mustard green is going to die back. The cabbages I've been harvesting, I've only got two of them left in the garden. And all this weed mass will die back as well. Carrots ought to be fine. They're pretty... They're pretty cold hardy. I've pulled carrots out of snow before, so. And then over here, my other bed, well, there's my kohlrabi coming up. I don't know if it's gonna make it, we'll see. That's 35 day kohlrabi and it's really behind schedule. So, uh, yeah, these fig trees, they're dormant. Most of them are getting tender at their, uh, at the growing tip, but uh, yeah. Friends, I don't have enough room in my garage or my house. I brought in my favorite fig tree. I brought in my Ronde Bordeaux. All the rest of these, well, they're on their own. Many of them will die, won't make it, especially these tender little guys down here. But I'm hopeful that some of these guys that are pretty well established and have a nice uh, you know, root system in here, that they'll be all right. I don't have anything to throw over here either except a plastic, big plastic tarp. And I may do that, but uh, I don't want to weigh them down and break branches. We'll see. The thing about fig trees, like I said before, I'm about done with most of them and I'm gonna, uh, they're going to be gone from the garden at some point in the near future. If the freeze gets some of them, well, that's just, that's life. You know, if I was smart, here's an idea. I'd come and take cuttings of some of the ones that I want to keep. That way, if they die back, I can have the cuttings in the refrigerator and I can start over with them. But I don't want to. Look at this guy. This guy's already waking up. Boy, is he in for a surprise. So... There we have a last look at some of the tenders in the garden. They'll be gone in a couple of days. Well, they'll be there, but they'll be dead. You can see I, I've done a pretty major harvest out of this bed. I took all of that lettuce out except those two. They were frost burned. All of the lettuce came out, a couple of cabbages, and a lot of mustard was harvested the other day. I think I've shown you before, but look at all that mycorrhizal fungi growing in the soil around those roots. That's a good sign of healthy soil. I took some over to my neighbor and she was very appreciative. Uh, she lives right there and her husband recently passed away. So it's nice to uh, help folks out. She was really hopeful for some vegetables. And so we were able to do that. I'll be bringing those other two cabbages in very shortly. They need to go in the house. That elderberry bush, man, it's growing so nice. I need to get a blanket over that one. All right, guy, I'm sorry, I'm gonna curl you up. Let's see if we can do this, this way. I should just snip these long ones off. All right, that's uh, better than nothing. Gather it around the bottom here. Well, the good thing is that what dies out here can be collected up and put in the compost pile and it's still useful in the garden. The thing about um, a cold snap like this, it's just, it's just a major weather event like a hurricane. We have hurricanes that'll snap your trees off and flood out the crops and yeah, well it's the same kind of thing. It's just one we're not used to down here, this wintry weather. Um, you know, at least if we're gonna lose our half our garden and a lot of our fig trees and stuff, man, at least we better get some snow out of it, I hope. That way we can run around like, like crazy people, throwing snowballs, doing all that stuff we don't ever get to do around here. So there we have it. That's how we're preparing for winter. 
what little we can do for it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope uh, you're staying warm and safe. And uh, check on your neighbors, bring your animals in and make provision. Uh, these are serious times. So thank you for joining us on Black Dumbo Southern Gardening. Please subscribe if you haven't. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.